Welcome to my metaphysical palace, human. I am Dark Abigail, and tonight I shall share with you a bit of my supreme life. <laughs> you may know someone with this kind of personality, or perhaps saw an anime character like this. Well, this syndrome has a name in Japan, Chunibyo. So, Chuni means second grade in junior high school or eighth grade for Americans. Byo means syndrome or disease, so second grade syndrome. The term was coined in 1999 by Hikaru Ijuin, who used it to describe the unrealistically big dreams of kids as if they were some kind of disease people could catch. So Chunibyo is a term for the behavior of adolescents in their second year of junior high school who tend to grow up too fast and their self-loving fantasies and preferences that are common in adolescence. In short, kids around a certain age start to ask themselves, who am I? And like many of us, they want to believe that they're special or different. They begin having these delusions of grandeur, believing they must be special, and even have unique powers or knowledge that other people don't have and certainly don't understand. You know the kids who like Naruto ran through the hallway a little too seriously or who on all levels except physical are a wolf. Wolf. <laughs> yeah, like that. Although the word disease is included, it has nothing to do with a medical disease or a mental disorder that actually requires treatment. As your mom might say, it's just a phase for most people. Are you worried you or a friend might be diagnosed with Chunibyo syndrome and entitled to financial compensation? Well, in the basic knowledge of otaku terminology written by the Otaku Culture Study Group, the following six typical cases are introduced. These were written to describe Japanese cases, but I think you'll see how they might translate. Number one is start listening to Western or foreign music. Number two is to start drinking coffee they don't even like and say things like, coffee tastes better black, like my soul. Number three, is they get upset when a band becomes successful and is required to tell everyone I knew them before they got big. Number four is they think they can do anything if they try. It's starting to sound familiar. Number five, they're often mad at their parents who don't respect their privacy and who obviously don't understand them. It's not just a phase, mom. And number six is kind of unique with Japan, but when they've started to study social studies and they become familiar with history, they suddenly say, America is dirty in disagreement with their peers. In rare cases, some people create their own characters or languages that only they can read. Wait, I tried to create my own language as a kid. According to the Chunibyo instruction manual by light novelist Sagami Hoya, there are three main types of Chunibyo. Dokyun types, subculture types, and evil eye types. Let's start with Dokyun types. Dokyun is Japanese internet slang used for someone with delinquent or insane behavior. Dokyun is used to refer to those who seem thoughtless. They have a rough appearance or they act out violently and are usually lacking in common sense. It's also used to refer to people who are undignified or rude. The Dokyun type of Chunibyo act antisocial or like delinquents and they think that they're cool. However, they're often secretly serious or soft-hearted and really not made out to be true delinquents. They like to brag about all the dangerous things they've apparently done and they may admire dark heroes viewing the police and real heroes as the baddies. The villains are just misunderstood. Ah. 2013 Tumblr is calling, hold on. An example of a Dokyun type is the main character from Tokyo Revengers. Next up is the subculture type. They're not influenced by trends and they try to be special and different from others. They're not necessarily fond of subculture, but they're satisfied with their different interests and think that they're cool. Perhaps they try to understand difficult topics and themes like postmodernism, or they read philosophical books from many years ago. Sometimes they might even brag about having watched an independent film, which is only played in one select theater. But they're usually secretly interested in trends. Last up is the evil eye type or Jaki Ganke. This type is fascinated by mysterious and supernatural powers. They might have more than one personality, including one that they have to suppress due to it being evil. Or demonic. So I guess that Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde is like the OG Chunibyo. This type is also sometimes referred to as the delusional type. Alright, so let's go over some Chunibyo characters. One of the ultimate Chunibyo is Yagami Light. Light, somewhat naively, tried to create a world without criminals. 
His extreme way of thinking shows the strength of his sense of justice, but the methods he took give the impression of a Chunibyo. Light is in the final stage of Chunibyo syndrome where there's no longer a cure. In his desire to create a better world, he ended up determining that he would need to become the god of this new world. He is exceedingly confident in his ability to do this. Light is all three types of Chunibyo. He's antisocial and thinks he's cool, Dokyun. He tries to be different than others and live a unique existence, subculture. And finally, of course, he's fascinated by supernatural powers, which will guide him to his goal, Evil Eye. Next up is perhaps my favorite Chunibyo who's really close to my heart, Kaido Shun from Psyche K. He is the typical Evil Eye type Chunibyo, and he's very, very, very sick with this type of Chunibyo. Although there are probably not many people in real life who are quite as Chunibyo as him, I'm sure that there are many secret diary keepers and people who believe that they're the prince or princess of some far off country, which I guess makes the princess diaries the Chunibyo's dream come true. <laughs> Kaido is actually very sweet and shy in real life, which is often the case for Chunibyo. All right, moving on to the real people who I will be armchair diagnosing with this serious disease today. Chunibyo often grow up to be pygmy girls, Disney adults, or even the ultimate Lord Chunibyo, Elon Musk. If we are all living in a video game, as he believes, it only makes sense that he's the main character. However, he needs to put a few more character creation points into intelligence and not just charisma if we're going to be colonizing Mars anytime soon. He's definitely helping a lot by having all of those children with space-ready names. Also, he used to be an alien. With all the supposedly super unique and genius things Elon theoretically plans to do, and the time he spends talking about it, you can't tell me he's not got major Chunibyo. Anyway, who else can run Twitter into the ground with such incredible speed? You might be wondering, oh my gosh, if I'm sick or someone I know is sick, how can I cure them? Well, curing Chunibyo is easy. You just have to experience many things and face reality, and this helps people accept that they're not completely special or different from others. You don't need to like or not like something to be unique or different. As we grow, we all find ways to deal with complex feelings and insecurities and find ways that are maybe more accepted by society. I also think that as we grow, we realize ultimately other people really don't care that much what you like and don't like. So just enjoy what you enjoy. According to my Japanese husband Kabe, all Americans go through a chunibyo phase at some point. They all dream something big, think they're special, and they want to be different from everyone else. Because these countries like America are often a big tossed salad of cultures and histories, people tend to chase a unique identity and pursue it. This is normal, and I think being able to be who you want to be is one of the things I embrace about Western culture. When I'm in Japan, I sometimes feel like a bit of an oddity, especially when I don't want to follow Japanese fashion trends or act a certain normal way. Luckily, I'm not really expected to do those things because I'm a foreigner. However, Japan is much more homogenous, which is why I'm not surprised that the concept of Chunibyo was born here. They often struggle with their identity, especially in the culture where ideas such as the nail that sticks out gets hammered down are normal. Conformity is expected and typically preferred, but I think we should cherish the part of ourselves that's Chunibyo. Now, you might be embarrassed to tell people you love writing supernatural fanfiction, or you're shamed by your parents because you like to outsmart them with your advanced knowledge of philosophy. But that's your journey. Keep trying to find out who you are. If you find who you are, congrats. And if you're still on your journey, enjoy your trip. Cherish your interests and your curiosity and analyze why you like things. Are you avoiding pumpkin spice lattes because you're afraid of looking basic? What's wrong with pumpkin coffee, man? It tastes good. If you want to like something, just like it. Keep doing the things that make you who you are. You may catch Chinibyo many times in your life. When you feel unimportant, when you feel helpless, or when everyone else's lives look way better than yours. But don't forget the feelings you felt when you were Chinibyo and you believed you're special and unique. Just improve yourself and become the person you want to be. Do I sound like a Chinibyo?